the Gospel according to Luke, um, chapter 11, part 2. And it came to pass, starting uh, verse 27, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee and the paps which thou hast supped. But he said, Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. And when they be, when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, This is an evil generation. They seek a sign, and there shall no sign be given it, but the sign of Jonas the prophet. For as Jonas was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them, for she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And, behold, a greater than Solomon is here. In the judgment. What? Is he talking about Sheba? I don't know. The men of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonas, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Greater than Solomon is here. Greater than Jonas is here. No man, when he had lighted a candle, put it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that they which come in may see the light. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, thy whole body is also full of light. But when thine eye is evil, Thy body also is full of darkness. <sighs> what does that mean when my eye is single? Yeah, gee whiz. What a weird word. When have we ever heard a synonym for when your eye is good and virtuous, right? single we never not in our lifetime okay and as he spake a certain Pharisee besought him to dine with him and he went in and sat down to meet so he's eating with the Pharisee and when the Pharisee saw it he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner And the Lord said unto him, Now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. Ravening and wickedness. There's another word we don't use. <laughs> it seems like it's like after, you know, a crow, like a raven, like an unclean bird. They talk, those birds talk, you know, they can carry on a, like a, a whole level of conversation. You can teach them stuff. Um, like remember Heckle and Jekyll, they were a cartoon. I think these birds are like really pretty bad, but we don't know about it. They try to make it like they're not so bad, but I think these are really bad birds. Why would they use a whole adjective? That is similar to wickedness about ravening. We never even use that word in a hundred years, too. Okay, ye fools did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also, but rather give alms of such things as ye have, and behold, all things are clean to you. But woe unto you, Pharisee, for ye tithe mint and rue. And all manner of herbs and pass over judgment in the love of God, these ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Uh, 
I don't understand that either. One should be done and one not the other. I Tithing mint and rue. What is even rue? A street? What is rue? I don't know, but it sounds like they're tithing things they shouldn't. Mint and rue and all manner of herbs. They're giving plants instead of animals, which is not what they're which is not the law. And pass over judgment and the love of God. Okay, so this is the, this is really what um, judgment. They're talking about judgment and the love of God. And um, these ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. Woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye love the uppermost seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets. So it's all lip service, right? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are as graves which appear not, and the men that walk over them are not aware of them. Then answered one of the lawyers and said unto him, Master, thus saying thou reproachest us also. Lawyer, huh? Yep. Woe well, unto you also, ye lawyers. Ha ha ha. For ye laid men with burdens grievous to be borne, and ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe well, unto you, for ye build the sepulchres of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. Truly ye bear witness that ye allow the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them. And ye build their sepulchres. So the lawyers are getting money building the sepulchres of the prophets. What's that called? What's that called? Soliciting. We'll build it. We've got the money. We'll build it. We'll build it. These ain't no Joseph of, of Arimathea's. No, these are the lawyers building the prophet's graves. Probably why we don't, we can't find any of them, huh? Yeah. Therefore also, said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them shall slay and persecute. Wait, some of them they shall slay and persecute. I'm like, Whoa, prophets aren't killing too many people. Actually, they did. A couple of them. Yeah. Therefore, also, said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets, which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this generation from the blood of Abel into the blood of Zacharias, which perished between the altar and the temple. Verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. Mm. So it's not just Satan that's after blood, you know, and all his bullshit, and all his horrible things that he does. It's not just him that's after blood. God is demanding blood. Look at... From the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, which perished between the altar and the temple, verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. Ooh. He's requiring blood, y'all. That's what it says. I mean, it doesn't say that, but that's what it means. What else does it mean? Woe unto you, lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in ye hindered. And as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently and to provoke him to speak of many things laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. <laughs> 